What's up, ladies and gents? And if you're new to the channel, it's your boy Shaka Zulu, and I'm back here for another video. And today, we're on chapter five, Animorphs, man. We left off, and a lot of Horpagiers, Taxon, a lot of aliens came out of Spaceship. Um, if you guys want to know what really happened, go to chapter one. I have a playlist. It will be in the comment down below. But I'll do a quick little recap. Uh, there was a dying alien in a spaceship that the kids saw when they were walking through a construction site. He got he gave them the power to morph into different animals because the Yerks are there to, for an invasion. So he was there to warn them about an invasion. Then... Um, he's still alive, actually. One chapter five. He's still alive right now. He's a dying Andalite, actually. But um, he's trying to tell them everything he knows before he dies. As like the aliens come out, so he's teaching them about the aliens that come out of the spaceship, and he's telling them about the Yurks and stuff like that. So we're on chapter five. Um, what happened at the end? Oh yeah, at the end of this of chapter four, a Hork Bajir. Uh, almost pretty much touches like almost he gets super close to the kids because they're hiding but you know they don't get caught yet they don't get caught yet so chapter five guys cheers gotta take a fucking hit mm. make sure you guys smoke with your boy you already know the vibes but if you're not smoking and you're watching this, I hope you enjoy it too. Alright, chapter 5. The hork pointed his gun, or whatever it was, around at the darkness. His snake head swerved left and right, trying to penetrate the gloom. Silence, the Andalite warned. hork do not see well in darkness, but their hearing is very good. The hork moved closer still. He was six feet away now, with just the low wall between us. He had to have heard my heart pounding. Maybe he didn't know what the sound was. Maybe he didn't recognize the sound of five terrified kids whose knees were quivering and teeth were chattering. Kids who, who were breathing in short, sudden gasps. I was sure I was going to die right then. I couldn't see in my mind the way those vicious... I could see in my mind the way those vicious wrists and elbow blades were going to slice my head from slice my head from body that's kind of a weird sentence that's literally how they say it we're going to slice my head from body if you've never been really afraid let me tell you it does things to you it takes over your mind and your body you want to scream you want to run you want to wet your pants you want to throw yourself down on the ground and cry and beg please please don't kill me and if you think you're brave, well, wait till you cowering a few feet away from a monster who can turn you into coleslaw in about three seconds flat. But then the Andalite's voice was in my head. Again, courage, my friends. And this warm, this I don't have any words to explain it. It was just like a warmth that spread all through me. It was like when you're a little kid and you've had terrible nightmares and you've woken up screaming. You know how you used to feel better when your mom or dad would turn on the light and come in and sit beside you in bed? That's what it's like. I mean, I was still terrified. The hork was still there, so real, so deadly. I could hear him breathing. I could smell him. But at the same time, I could feel the panic coming under control. But at the same time, I could feel the panic coming under control. I could feel the strength flowing from the dome, from the doomed Andalite. He was letting us borrow some of his courage, even though he must have been afraid himself. The hork moved away. Something new was coming from the blade ship. Shaking and chattering, I rose high enough to look over the low wall. Every hork every taxon, was turned toward the ship now. They're all standing at attention, I whispered. How can you tell, Marco whispered back. Who knows when a jelly-eyed centipede or a walking salad shooter from hell is standing at attention. Then he appeared. Visor 3, the Andalite said. Visor 3 was an Andalite, or at least he was an Andalite controller. What the, Rachel said, isn't that an Andalite? Only once has a Yurk been able to take an Andalite body, the Andalite said. There is only one Andalite controller. 
That one is Visor 3. Visor 3 walked confidently toward the wounded Andalite. The Visor seemed much like the Andalite. It was hard to tell them apart at first. He had the same mouthless face, the same extra straw guy that turned there, here and there, checking out everything in all directions. The same powerful yet sleek four-legged body and the same wicked tail. But if the Visor looked like a normal Andalite, he felt different. It was like he was wearing a mask. Only you just only you just knew that under that fake sweetness of the mask there was something twisted and foul. Well well, Visor three said. I almost had a heart attack when I realized I was hearing the Visor's thoughts. He can hear our thoughts, Cassie whisp Cassie whispered. If he can, we're so dead. I don't even want to think about it, Rachel told her. He cannot hear your thoughts, the Andalite said, as long as you don't direct them to him. You hear his thoughts because he's broadcasting them for all to hear. This is a great victory for him, so he wants all to hear. What have we here? A meddling Andalite? Visitor 3 looked more closely at the Andalite ship. Ah, but no ordinary Andalite warrior. Prince Elfango Senrenio Shantul, if I'm not mistaken. An honor to meet you. You're a legend. How many of our fighters have you shredded? Seven? Or was it eight by the time the battle ended? So, the Visitor finally get to meet the fucking, the main villain. He's kind of like the main villain, like, um, of this whole series. They're just trying to, like, take out Visitor 3, basically. Or just stay away from him, honestly, because Visitor 3 is honestly a dangerous dude. But cheers, guys. You'll know more about some of the stuff that he does that's just like, what the heck, man? Like, you're gonna be like, is this really in a kid's book? But let's get it. The Andalite didn't answer, but I had the feeling maybe it had been more than eight. The very late, the very last Andalite in this sector of space. Yes, I'm afraid your dome ship has been completely destroyed, completely. I watched it burn as it fell into the atmosphere of this little world. There will be others, the Andalite prince said. The visitor took a step closer to the Andalite. Yes, and when they come, it will be too late. This world will be mine, my own contribution to the Yurk Empire, Empire, our greatest conquest, and then I'll be visitor one. What do you want with these humans, the Andalite asked. You have your Taxon allies, you have your hork slaves, and other slaves from other worlds. Why these people? Because there, because there are so many, and they are so weak. Visitor three sneered. Billions of bodies, and they have no idea what's happening. With this many hosts, we can spread throughout the universe. Unstoppable. Billions of us. We'll have to build a thousand new yerk pools just to raise yerks for half the number of bodies. Face it, Andalite. You have fought well and bravely, but you have lost. Visitor three stepped right up to the Visitor three stepped right up to the Andalite. I could feel the Andalite's fear, but rather than cower, he fought the pain of his wound and climbed to his feet. He knew he was going to die. He wanted to die on his feet, looking his enemy in the face. But Visitor three was not done taunting his foe. I promise you one thing, Prince Alfangar. When we have this planet with its rich harvest of bodies. We will move against the Andalite homeworld. I will personally hunt down your family, and I will personally oversee the placement of my most faithful lieutenants in their heads. I hope that they will. I hope that they will resist, so I can hear their minds scream. The Andalite struck, his tail whipped up and over so fast you couldn't really see it. The Visor twisted his head aside. The Andalite's blade missed the Visor's head by a bare half inch, but it sliced into the shoulder. Blood or something like blood sprayed from the wound. Yes, I hissed. I could hear the visitor's howl of pain in my head. At the same time, a blinding beam of blue light shot from the tail of the Andalite ship. It sliced into the nearest bug fighter. Hork and Taxon scattered. Even crouching behind the wall, I could feel a wave of blistering heat. 
The bug fighter sizzled and disappeared. Fire, Visor 3 yelled. Burn his ship. The night exploded in blinding light. Red beams lanced around the, bla the blade ship and the remaining bug fighter. The Andalite ship glowed and with a strange slowness disintegrated. Then in the flash, then in the flashing glow of Dracon beams, I saw or thought I saw humans, a small group of them, maybe three or four back in the shadows behind Visser. There are people over there, I told Marco. What, are they prisoners? Take the Andalite, Visser three ordered the soldiers. Hold him for me. Three big Horpagia grabbed the Andalite and held him down. Their wrist blades were at his throat, but they knew better than to kill him. That was to be Visor 3's personal privilege. Then we all then we saw why Yurks Then we saw why a Yurk as powerful as Visor 3 would inhabit the only captured Andalite body. As we watched, Visor 3 began to morph. His Andalite head grew larger and larger, much larger. The four horse like legs merged into two then expanded. Each leg became as big around as a redwood tree. The delicate Andalite arms sprouted and became tentacles. This isn't real, Cassie whispered. This isn't real. In the hideously bloated head, a mouth appeared. It was filled with teeth as long as your arm. The mouth grew wider and wider, becoming a monstrous, terrifying grin. There was nothing left of the Andalite body. A monster had taken its place. The roar of the beast Visor 3 had become made the ground shake. I covered my ears with my hands. My teeth rattled from the sound. I heard someone whimpering. It was me. Visor 3 had become a monster that made the hork and the Taxons look like harmless toys. He reached out with one thick tentacle and grabbed the Andalite by the neck. No, no, no. I heard Cassie whisper over and again, No, no, no. Don't look, Rachel said to her. She put her arm around Cassie's shoulder and held her close. Then she reached for Tobias and took his hand. I guess you never really know someone till you see them scared. And even scared to death with tears running down her face, Rachel had strength to spare. Visor 3 lifted the Andalite straight up in the air, tearing him from the grasp of the hork -Bajir. The Andalite Prince struck again and again with his tail, but each strike was like a pinprick against such a creature. Visor 3 held the Andalite high in the air, and then Visor 3 opened his mouth wide. And that's the end of chapter 5, y'all. I'll probably release chapter 6 if you guys made it to the end. Shout out to the people that actually make it to the end. If you make it to the end, Man, we gotta start having like a at the like when I finish each book, I'm gonna have like a you know kind of a book review book moment. I might drink a beer or maybe at the end of the last chapter, I'll do like a little review of the whole book and how I feel about this book. Um, but cheers, guys! I thought I was gonna I was gonna, I was gonna say something, so I got stuck there for a second. But I don't think I need to say anything else. But I appreciate you guys watching, bro. This is crazy, man. So I'm probably going to drop Chapter 6 the same time as I dropped Chapter 5. Just because of the way it ended. That's what I was trying to say earlier, I think. Just because of the way it ended. Um, he said, Visor 3 held the Andalite high in the air. And then the Visor 3 opened his mouth. So basically implying that the Visor is about to eat the dying Andalite. So Chapter 6, we'll get, to, we'll get into that get more into that but you guys will see that in the next video man remember to eat breathe smoke weed cheers guys and remember to have a dope week and a dope day peace you can zoom in whatever that's around mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Being free if I could no longer be me 
you don't like what you see, so you rub up on my energy. I just wanna be me, smoking on that end of weed. So I just close my eyes because I know that one day everything, everything's gonna be alright. If I try, I know I fly. Open your eyes and see past my flesh and see in my mind. I open my heart. You see all my scars, you see all the love that I push in the dark Always feel alone so I hop in my car, push button start I dream every day as I look to the stars Spilling my heart while I'm spitting these bars All alone and all alone On my own, yeah Some shit Come on, get it to go <laughs> I found the smoothest one. Smoothest. Ooh. 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 Ooh.